Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make my best ever gluten-free crab cakes. If you like your crab cakes thick and meaty with hardly any fillers, then you've come to the right place because these are by far the best gluten-free crab cakes. Let's get started. So we start by mixing mayonnaise and a little bit of Dijon mustard in a bowl. And to that, we're going to add Worcestershire sauce. And then I'm also adding a couple dashes or three or four <laughs> of uh, hot sauce. And mix this up. And now I'll switch to a whisk just to get it more combined, which I should have started in the first place, but I didn't think of it. <laughs> And to that, we're going to add egg. And of note, this recipe is for one, uses one whole egg. And right here in the video, I'm only making a half a recipe. So all I did was whisk up the egg and then just add half of it to it. That's a simple way to have a recipe that only uses one egg. Now to this, I normally add crushed up crackers like um, Char gluten-free table crackers or um, Milton's sea salt crackers, but I got a tip from a reader, thank you Marshall if you're watching this, to use um, ground gluten-free brioche bread. So I took one of my brioche buns out of the freezer and I put it in my food processor and I'm going to give it a shot. So here I am using jumbo lump crab meat. I mean, these are enormous lumps. I love this in this recipe. You don't have to use jumbo lump, but if you can get it, you should try it because it is amazing, you guys. I could just probably eat this entire can cold from the fridge but I like to pick them out with my hands and put them in because sometimes there are shells and I also don't want to break them up. So now I'm adding salt and pepper to taste. You can also add something like Old Bay if you want to, but I just find it takes away from the taste of the actual crab, but it's your preference. So now the trick to getting meaty crab cakes is to just gently fold the crab meat into that mixture because why would you even buy expensive crab meat if you're going to break it all up? You can get cheaper like back fin or claw or whatever, but when you go for the super colossal or jumbo lump, I mean, you're spending all that money. You may as well keep it in big, huge lumps. That's my preference anyway. So I like to fold them versus, you know, mixing it all together. So now I'm going to get a baking sheet and I've lined it with parchment that I buttered the parchment on top. And I'm taking my jumbo scoop here and I'm going to make three crab cakes. Again, this is a half a recipe, so it'd be six crab cakes if you were to use the entire pound of crab meat. I like my crab cakes pretty thick because they kind of replicate what I used to have at this local place called Surf Rider. They made the best crab cakes and now I can make them at home with minimal effort at that. So we put these in the fridge for at least an hour just to solidify. And then when they come out of the fridge, I'm drizzling them with a little bit of melted butter. This is not lemon juice. <laughs> it's just my, my little lemon um, container. So we drizzle them with melted butter and we put them in a 450 degree oven for about 12 to 15 minutes. And the melted butter kind of acts like um, as if you were frying them, but without the frying 
aspect. I prefer a baked crab cake over fried. And look at these, you guys. They are divine. I absolutely love these crab cakes. Use gluten-free brioche or use uh, gluten-free char uh, crackers or Milton's crackers, whatever you have on hand, you can use. And I'm serving this with a little bit of store-bought remoulade sauce. Look at them. They are thick and meaty, all crab, hardly any filler, just like a crab cake should be. Enjoy.